While some dementia can be caused by vascular disease, a series of mini strokes or neurodegenerative diseases like Huntington's and Parkinson's disease. By far the most common form of dementia is caused by Alzheimer's disease. Retired Rear Admiral Dick Myers was recently diagnosed. It's going to take away my brain, it's going to take away my, my confidence in myself and all of the, all of the things that I just, uh, I am, I'm frightened to death of. Dick has enrolled in a clinical drug trial at UCLA in hopes of finding a treatment or cure. He has watched his grandmother and mother die of Alzheimer's. His sister Connie had it too. Oh, it's, what an ugly disease. It just, there's no way to describe it other than that. Because you're helpless. You just, my sister Connie was the brain in the family. And uh, here she is laying there with nothing, no, no attachment to the world. You know, I can't, oh, I'll be truthful with you. I can't go commit suicide. I'm a Christian man, and I know the Lord won't accept that. But uh, if the alternative is making a fool of myself in front of anybody, especially my wife. It, it's, it's very, very difficult for me. There are FDA-approved drugs for Alzheimer's, but they are thought only to help with symptoms and not actually change the course of the disease. What? the field is largely focused on now is finding drugs that can actually slow the course of Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease by definition is a progressive neurodegenerative disorder. The effects on the brain are unrelenting. They may vary in the rate of progression from patient to patient, but over time patients get worse. We want to find drugs that can slow the course of this disease or stop it in its tracks. You know, I think that people need to realize that even though we don't have a cure yet, it's important to work with your doctor because if you're having any memory issues, there's a lot of things that can cause it. A medicine side effect, a thyroid imbalance, and even if it is Alzheimer's, the earlier we start helping, the better off people are. There are symptomatic treatments that will keep people at a higher level of functioning longer. The sooner you get started, the better off you are. At UCLA and other top research centers around the world, there is unprecedented progress on the battlefront of Alzheimer's and related forms of dementia. The whole goal is to understand the disease so that we can develop effective therapies for the disorder. And that's been the holy grail for the field since 1906 when Alois Alzheimer's first described the first case of what later no became known as Alzheimer's disease. The brain is a remarkable organ. Complex chemical and electrical processes allow us to speak, move and see, remember, feel emotion and make decisions. Inside a healthy brain, billions of cells called neurons constantly communicate with one another. They receive messages from each other as electrical charges travel down the axon to the end of the neuron. The electrical charges release chemical messengers called neurotransmitters. The neurotransmitters move across microscopic gaps or synapses between neurons. This cellular circuitry enables communication within the brain. Alzheimer's disease interrupts this delicate interplay, compromising the ability of the neurons to communicate with each other, destroying memory and thinking skills. It is believed to be caused in part by a buildup of plaque in the brain related to a protein called amyloid beta. Well, this is a very interesting protein. Originally, when I began doing research in Alzheimer's disease approximately 20 or 25 years ago, no one thought that this protein was normal, this amyloid beta protein, or A-beta as it's called. We showed that the A-beta protein is actually normal. And so then the question became, well, if you have a normal protein, why is it causing disease? And we found in my laboratory and in others that what happens with this protein is it forms these globs that increase in size over time. And so my laboratory is trying to understand how something that starts as a single molecule can stick to itself and form these clumps. And if we understand that process, then we can develop therapeutic agents that will prevent that clumping process.
and that's what my laboratory is focused on. Another hallmark of Alzheimer's in the brain is the formation of what are called neurofibrillary tangles inside the very neurons themselves, related to a protein named tau. As the plaques and tangles multiply and invade, the brain begins to shrink and lose function. In the past, researchers could only see the ravages of Alzheimer's after a patient's death. Now, new and evolving technology, advanced imaging of the brain, and so-called biomarkers, even found in spinal fluid and blood, can show evidence of the disease. So Alzheimer's disease is a very long, latent disorder. It has a stage that is uh, indolent and silent uh, that spans probably one or two decades before symptoms manifest. So what happens is during that time, the proteins that inflict Alzheimer's disease symptoms called amyloid and tau already spread and deposit in the brain very silently. The big breakthrough that's come re very recently from our researchers at UCLA is that we've been able to find that these deposits, these bright colored deposits, occur 10 to 20 years before symptoms appear. This is very important because once symptoms appear, it is difficult to reverse the ravages of this very, very tragic disease. Another area of intense research in Alzheimer's disease and many other diseases, of course, is the genetics. Researchers around the globe are searching for all of those Alzheimer's disease genes, the hundreds of them, that combined make one's risk to develop Alzheimer's dementia. Here at UCLA, we're also looking at how these genes associate with changes in the brain, with tissue loss, with signal change, all of these very important factors that can predict one's conversion to dementia in the future. And there has been a discovery of a rare dominant Alzheimer's gene in a population where descendants who get the gene from a parent will get Alzheimer's disease. I was of the thinking that uh, when you get to be 80 and 90, you, di you die of something and w you know, all your organs are eventually going to go, maybe your brain's going first. Um, my thinking turned around though when I started meeting families that were getting this disease at age 40. We've identified a, a number of families uh, that all, see, uh, all arise from the same area of Mexico, from the Jalisco region of Mexico. All these families um, who have been identified in Chicago, Southern California, Texas, and many places in Mexico are all basically distant cousins of one another. That this is one large family and these are their, these are their descendants of one person, essentially. The families provide tantalizing clues and new opportunities to study and fight the disease. This population, which we can predict with 100% certainty whether or not someone's going to get the disease, gives us a unique opportunity to, to prevent the disease and be able to detect that we're preventing the disease. So this knowledge gives us potential drug targets. Well, I think that um, we're at a very exciting point in the history of clinical trials for Alzheimer's disease. And there are a large number of candidate treatments that are currently in development that hold great promise, including drugs that, um, for the first time, have been shown to have an impact on the actual biology of disease. Um, that is, we now have drugs that can target, for example, the hallmark protein that accumulates in the brain of someone with Alzheimer's disease and reduce the levels of that protein in the brain through treatment. And that's something that we've never before been able to say. And we're excited to test those therapies to see if they can indeed slow the clinical progression of disease. In the laboratory at UCLA, Dr. Galabatan and his team's latest research has had promising results. These are the amyloid plaques in the brain and they have been greatly reduced with the application of our drug. In the laboratory, Dr. Batan has achieved a reduction of both the Alzheimer plaques and tangles. Um, and when we give our drug, there is a great reduction of the neurofibrillary tangles. The experiments we have done so far have been uh, elaborate experiments, and when we saw the results, we were all ecstatic to see that indeed the, the drug actually worked, reducing those toxic proteins in the brain and moving us forward towards what we hope to be prevention and cure for diseases such as Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Batan hopes this new drug can be tested on patients in two or three years. Over the years, we have been able to overcome a lot of the diseases that afflicted humanity in the past. We know how to overcome most of the infectious diseases. Cancer is no longer a death sentence. 
but the diseases of pathologic protein aggregation, including Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, ALS, mad cow disease, all of these are diseases that have no cure. So this drives me every day. And unfortunately, one of my closest friends has been diagnosed with early Alzheimer's just recently. And it's been very painful watching him deteriorate and lose his memory. And I hope that still in his lifetime, I can make a change. So if we are not able to find means to at least delay the onset of Alzheimer's disease, it could bankrupt the U.S. healthcare system. Now, that said, it's a hopeful time. And a drug that could delay diagnosis by five years could cut the total number of cases in half. And given so much um, promise exists with what we've learned about this disease and the many drugs that are in development that target the, directly target the biology, I think this is a hopeful time and we believe that um, with funding, and participation in research will be successful at defeating this disease. A treatment or cure that can't come too soon for Dick Myers and his wife Anne. My greatest hopes are that I die a gentleman. How a new Alzheimer's and dementia care program at Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center is changing the lives of patients and their families in our next report. Thank you.